polynomial inequalities. To solve polynomial inequalities, we use the same steps that we did to solve quadratic inequalities. We want to put it in standard form. Basically, that means we just want a zero on one side of our inequality symbol. We want all the other terms on the other side. And it's better if we have it in descending order. We want to find the zeros of the function. Remember, to find the zeros of the function means we set it equal to zero and solve it. It may be that we can solve that by factoring. It may be that we have to solve it for the zeros graphically. Then we want to look at the graph and choose the x intervals that correspond to where your function is less than zero or greater than zero, depending on what the problem states. Less than zero, remember, means that we want to look at the parts of the graph that are below the x-axis. Greater than zero means we want to look at the parts of the graph that are above the x-axis. So let's look at one. Here we have x cubed minus 5x squared is less than or equal to 6x. First thing I want to do here is get a zero on one side of my inequality. So I'm going to subtract my 6x from both sides. So that gives me x cubed minus 5x squared minus 6x less than or equal to zero. Now I want to find my x-intercepts or find the location of my zeros. So I want to set this equal to zero and solve it. I can solve this by factoring. First I have a common factor of x, which leaves me with x times x squared minus 5x minus 6. And then I can factor x squared minus 5x minus 6. Because here I want numbers that multiply together to give me a negative 6 and add together to give me negative 5. So that means I'm going to have x minus 6 times x plus 1. So then I set each factor equal to 0. Remember, we call that the zero factor property. So we get a solution of x equals zero, x equals six, and x equals negative one. So that's the location of our x-intercepts. Now I want to look at my graph. So I'm going to go to my y equals screen. And top in my graph. Let me clear all this out. This is the function that I want to graph. x to the third power minus 5x squared minus 6x. I want to set it on a standard window, so I'm going to do zoom 6 and I get a cubic graph there. You can see my x-intercept of negative 1, of 0, and positive 6. Now, for this particular inequality, it includes the less than or equal to symbol. So that means I want to look below the x-axis. Well, the portions of my graph that are below the x-axis are this first tail, which is going to keep going down, 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 down. So that's going to be where x goes from negative infinity up to my first x-intercept, which is negative 1. Now, because I have the equal mark, I'm going to include the negative 1. And then I'm going to go to the other portion of the graph that's below the x-axis. That's this part. And that starts at the next x-intercept. So that starts at the x-intercept of 0 
and it stays below the x-axis until we get over to the x value of positive 6. And again, I want to include those endpoints. So this graph has negative y values when x is less than negative 1 and between 0 and 6. If we go to the table, we can see if we just scroll through our table, if we look at x values less than negative 1, we see we get negative y's. And if we look at x values between 0 and 6, we get negative y's. But then once we get up past 6, we get positive y's. So this, in fact, is our solution. Now this is the same problem, except this one does not include the equal portion of the inequality symbol. So that means I do not want to include my endpoints. The rest of the function is exactly the same. Look at that inequality, and then go back and look at this one. So my solution here will be the same intervals, except this time I will have the parentheses at the endpoints instead of the brackets. If I wanted to know where this function was greater than 0, then I would be looking at the other portions of the graph. So that's going to be this little bitty part right here, which is between negative 1 and 0. So I would start at negative 1, go up to 0. I don't have my equal, so I won't include the endpoints. And then it becomes positive again over here after we get past 6. So x would go from 6 to infinity. Let's look at one more. x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. This one already has my 0 here. I need to solve this. I'm going to solve this by factoring. This would factor into x squared minus 1 times x squared minus 1. Now, here I'm solving it for the zeros. Each of these is going to factor into x plus 1 times x minus 1. So when I set these equal to 0, I have x plus 1, I have x minus 1, then these are going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to have zeros of x equal negative 1 and x equal 1. Let's look at this graph. x to the fourth power minus 2x squared plus 1. What happens with this graph is it's dipping down and it's touching the x-axis, but it is not going below the x-axis. So if I want to know where this graph is less than 0 or below the x-axis, it doesn't go below the x-axis. Let me zoom in on that so you can see that a little better. Let me do a zoom box. For zoom box, you just kind of mark the corners that you want to enlarge. And it will enlarge the box that you create. You see it never does go below the x-axis. It touches it, but it doesn't cross it. So where it's below the x-axis, is never. So this graph would have no solution. If I had x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1 greater than or equal to 0, it would be all real numbers because it's always greater than or equal to 0.